Morning guys. So we're going to round out the week with another um, gene regulation example. Hopefully the activity yesterday went pretty smoothly. I think everyone, well, I didn't get any questions after I fixed the video. So hopefully that means that it went okay. Um, so the way I decided, I think I'm going to break this one up. I think I'm going to do this one in two chunks um, for a couple reasons. A, because um, I don't want to confuse you all with, there, there's kind of a lot to go along with this activity. And I kind of want to make sure everyone's got this set up before we get into the actual um, experiment. So today's going to be mostly like, I, I want to say pre-lab, but it's not really a lab, pre-activity questions, just making sure everyone understands what the setup is here. And then on Tuesday, we'll wrap it up and kind of tie it in from what we talked about this week by looking at the actual results and all that stuff. So we're going to kind of chunk it up today. Um, so I want to give you the background information on this and explain a few things to kind of make it as clear as possible. Um, but that being said, some of this might still be confusing. So feel free to shoot me any emails throughout the day if you need to. Um, and feel free to ask me questions about yesterday's assignment too, if there were any, but anyway. Um, so what we're going to look at today and Tuesday is another example of gene regulation, this time in bacteria called Vibrio harvii, I think is how you say that. Um, so the gene that we're looking at in these bacteria are genes that are responsible for bioluminescence, which if you know what bioluminescence is, they are the um, organisms that can glow, essentially. Um, there's different ways you can achieve this, but we're going to look at how the bacteria or these bacteria do it. Um, the reason why they do this is it's used for signaling amongst different bacteria. Obviously, bacteria don't have eyes and ears and mouths and noses and all that stuff. So this is how they interact with other bacteria, and this is also how they know where certain bacteria are, where food is, that kind of thing. They use it to kind of get a feel for their environment. So there are three major... Um, factors in this signaling process that we're going to look at. There is the light gene, obviously the gene that is responsible for producing the molecule that produces light, the, that glows. Um, there are the signaling genes that will be released if this gene is active. And those genes, um, or the, sorry, those molecules that are released are attached to a receptor molecule. The receptor will activate the light gene. So again, talking about regulation, this receptor is the same thing as like we looked at yesterday with the well, not exactly the same because this is in the cell membrane, but the receptor is responsible for activating and deactivating the um, light gene. So the way this works is that um, it's kind of a domino effect where if one bacteria starts to glow, a bunch of them will start to glow. I'll link some really cool videos. You can see when people disturb these pools of uh, bacteria in the ocean, you can see that it just takes a little bit of movement and then they all kind of cascade and all of them activate at the same time and they all cause this glowing effect. So this is why this works. So again, they're using this for communication. So when one bacteria becomes active, they're all going to become active. And in order for them to become active, they need to receive this signal molecule. And this signal molecule will be released when the light gene is also active. These two genes are linked. So I'm a bacteria. I'm sitting doing my own thing. And the bacteria next to me starts to glow. And when the bacteria next to me starts to glow, they're going to release these signal molecules. The signal molecules are going to make their way over to me and I'm going to receive the signal molecules, they're going to bind my receptor, and that's going to tell me, okay, activate my light gene, and I'm going to glow as well, and then I'm going to start glowing, and then I'm also going to be, start, or be producing signal genes, and then I'll pass it on to the next one. It's like a game of telephone, essentially. Um, over time, these signaling molecules will dissipate, and they will stop being released, um, depending on the level of activity. Once that happens, it will deactivate the light gene, they'll stop glowing, and they'll go back to being... Um, neutral until something else comes along to disturb them. So hopefully that makes sense. Shoot me any emails if that doesn't make sense. Um, so we're, just like yesterday, we're going to look at some examples of mutants. So some mutations where part these one of these three parts doesn't work. So what happens when the signal gene doesn't work? What happens when the receptor doesn't work? And what happens when the light genes don't work? So let's look at these one at a time. So we've got two mutants here that we're going to start with. Actually, So yeah, so let's go back to this real quick and then I'll go to the next thing because I, I thought they were going to do more background, but anyway. Um, so, three potential variations of a mutation. So, signal genes. If there is a problem with the signal gene, um, it can still produce light if it receives any signal, but it will not be able to produce a signal. So, basically, this is an example of bacteria that will be able to receive a signal and start to glow, but if they glow, they'll not, they're not going to pass on the message to the next bacteria because there's no signal gene. Receptor. 
they can produce signal genes and they have the gene for producing light but they will not be able to produce light because the receptor um, will not be able to bind any signal genes and the receptor is what dictates whether or not that gene is turned on so this is going to be a bacteria that won't be able to glow and then uh, obviously this one hopefully is fairly easy to figure out if there's no light gene they can't glow because their light gene is um, inactive they still have signal genes they can still signal to other bacteria and they can still receive signals so that'll still be going but they won't be able to actually glow and bioluminesce so those are your three variations today and that's mostly what i want to focus on because i know this is confusing that's why i wanted to chunk this up i want to make sure you get this first before we go on to the next part because if you don't understand this then the actual experiment isn't really going to make sense so for two well for background and then what we're going to continue on Tuesday. I mostly will want you to just get your hypothesis today. Uh, we're going to look at two mutants in the lab and we're going to test them to see how they work and see if these are the mutants that we have. We've got our A bacteria. The A bacteria have a malfunctioning receptor. And then we've got our B bacteria. The B bacteria are lacking signal genes and we're going to see what happens when we put them in certain cultures. So, experiment one. We've got a plate with one half A and the other half is also A. And that seems redundant, but you're going to see for the last example uh, why we do that. Um, so basically what we're going to look at here is we're going to plate these bacteria, we're going to let them grow, and then we're going to see what they do under certain cir circumstances. Are they going to bioluminesce or are they not going to? Are they going to glow or are they just going to stay the way they are? So experiment one, we've got bacteria. All these bacteria are missing a receptor. They can produce signal genes, but none of them have a receptor. So first one, um, and this is going to be one of your things today, I want you to hypothesize, do you think this bacteria, or do you think this plate will glow? Do you think top half will glow, bottom half will glow, neither will glow, both will glow, whatever you may think was going to happen. So that's why we chunked it up into two parts. Which half do you think is going to glow? Both, one, or neither. All right, second experiment. We now have a plate full of B bacteria. Um, so with the B bacteria, they are missing signal genes. So they can receive signals and they can produce light, but they will not be able to signal to one another um, if that is occurring. So next hypothesis, do you think, what do you think is going to happen with this plate? Is this half going to glow? This half going to glow? Both? Neither? Tell me why. And this is just a hypothesis. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. I just want you to start thinking in that direction for today. I know this might be confusing. All right, and then experiment three, and this is the one we're definitely going to focus a lot more on on Tuesday, so this might be the more challenging one. Again, I just want you to try it, though. It doesn't have to be a right hypothesis, but this is the one that might challenge you. So for this one, we got a half and half plate. We've got half A, half B. The A half is unable to receive signals, but they can produce signal genes and produce light, but they won't be able to produce light with no receptor. Um, the B half has a receptor and light genes, but they produce no signal genes. So... Imagine that these are both on the same plate and they can interact with each other. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think A is going to glow? Do you think B is going to glow? Both? Neither? Tell me why? So on and so forth. So that's really all I wanted to do today. I want to talk about the results on Thursday and have you guys explain those. Or not Thursday, today's Thursday. On Tuesday, because um, I, again, I wanted to give you guys a chance to kind of digest this and see the process first. And that way we can start to get questions before we dive all the way into it. Um, so if you're confused by this, do your best. Um, like I said, most or most of the questions are going to be hypotheses, and hypotheses don't have to be right as long as you explain yourself. Um, the other half of the questions are just asking about what um, each part of the genes or which, what the different genes do. So hopefully that, at the very least, makes sense. Um, but if not, um, we'll work through it today and Tuesday. So feel free to email me any questions if you have them. Um, and we will finish this up next week. Have a good weekend and I'll see you guys later.